Welcome! Today we're gonna build a $700 gaming PC with mostly new parts. Let's begin with the motherboard. This is a B760MA from ASUS. We got it in an open box condition for about $68. This motherboard came in its original packaging along with all of its accessories. I honestly wanted to do the first unboxing in the video, but I decided to test it before I started building the PC, because as you guys know, there has been some stuff going on with Intel LGA 1700 CPUs, so I wanted to make sure that everything worked properly and the BIOS was up to date as well. I've had and still have some rare scenarios with ASUS motherboard specifically, where they give CPUs way too much voltage for no apparent reason. So the first thing that I did was to update the BIOS. Then I went into the operating system and did bunch of stress tests to confirm that everything was working as intended. Anyhow, the CPU that I went for in this build is i5-12400. It's a great CPU and it's starting to become my go-to choice for mid-range budget PCs. We paid $125 for it. We'll be cooling it with a deep cool AG200. It's an extremely budget, but at the same time, an amazing CPU cooler. I thought that I would need to go for something bigger, but apparently, this CPU cooler is enough to keep this i5-12400 under 66 degrees in Cinebench R23 all-core stress test. We bought this cooler for $12. Normally, I would have applied my GD900 thermal paste onto the CPU, but this CPU cooler came with its own thermal paste pre-applied, so I just went with that instead. For the storage, I chose this 512GB M.2 NVMe SSD from X-Ray Disk. It's a budget Gen 3 SSD that I purchased when it was on sale for $25. US We'll be installing it in this top M.2 slot under the heatsink. And while we're at it, let's talk about the correct way to install and cool an M.2 SSD. The stickers that you see on these SSDs are actually thermally conductive and you shouldn't remove them. And if your M.2 SSD has no chips on its back, you should always install this small pad onto the already existing cubicle pad that will always be located under the M.2 slot. The only reason why you're required to do this is so that you don't bend your M.2 SSD, because when you screw it down, the motherboard heatsink will push it down and make it bend downwards. And to stop that bend, you should always install the extra pad to elevate the already existing one. For the case, I went with Dark Flash DLM200 that had 5 120mm Infinity Style fans pre-installed. For now, let's leave them like that, but later on I'm gonna show you guys what I changed. This case, along with its fans, cost us around $40. Now we might say that it's suspiciously cheap, but it actually has a bit of backstory. Someone bought this case along with its fans for about 100 US dollars. For some reason, they thought their ATX motherboard would fit into this MATX case, which it didn't. They also thought that they could connect those 5V ARGB fans to their motherboard without the 5V ARGB header, which they couldn't. So they were basically left with a case and fans that they couldn't use. Now, I knew how expensive these things were, and even though the guy was selling them for $60, which is like $40 less than what he bought them for, I just ignored it at first, because I can buy similar stuff for way less. And knowing my market, nobody's gonna pay me extra if I build a PC in this expensive case. So I just let it sit for a few days. After which the buyer actually contacted me himself because he knew that I build PCs and long story short, he gave it to me for $40. The power supply that we'll be powering the system with is none other than Deepcool PF500. At this point, I think I've bought around 50 of these power supplies and I gotta say, they are pretty much perfect in every way. I haven't had any issues with any of their models and I think I'll continue to buy them as long as Deepcool continues to supply us with their power supplies. We bought this particular model for $40. For the RAM, we'll be going with a 32GB kit from Team Group clocked at 3200MHz. We paid $50 for it. I've ordered dozens of items from this brand as well. Whether it was budget or not so budget product, all of Team Group's items were perfect in every way. 
and of course the star of the show, RTX 4060 Ti. Let me tell you how I got this GPU. One day I was browsing the market at around 2am and I saw a listing of this 4060 Ti that someone posted like an hour ago and there was no way for me to go there and visit him at 3am. So I woke up the next day, sent him a message at 8am and told him that I'd give him a call at 10, which I did but he didn't answer. So I waited for a few hours, maybe he was asleep or maybe he already sold it. I couldn't tell, but he actually called me at around 12 at noon and told me that he still hasn't sold the GPU. Hearing that news got me extremely excited, because we not only scored the best deal of my career, but we also found the last component to finish building our gaming PC. Once I got there, the guy even showed me the check and the date that he bought this GPU on. And it turned out that he bought this RTX 4060 Ti like a week ago and he wanted an upgrade I guess? I honestly didn't ask too many questions because I really didn't want the guy to change his mind. The 8 gig models of these 4060 Ti's go for around 5 to 600 US dollars here and this guy was selling it for 300. At this point I was waiting for the guy to say something like oh there's a faulty fan or the temps are high or something. But no. The GPU was honestly perfect, he even let me test it and play games on it. So I took it home, tested it and it was indeed in a perfect condition. I honestly couldn't believe just how great of a deal I just scored. And before we move on to the gaming benchmarks, I wanna show you guys what kind of changes I made at the last minute. Ideally, I like to install two fans at the top, but since we only had one, I decided to remove it altogether. Now I could have added a 240mm AIO, but this CPU is extremely easy to cool and while I was making this decision, I got contacted by someone that was looking for a PC for around $1000 and they wanted it fast. They also asked me to add a bit of extra storage, which I added a terabyte of SATA SSD that I bought for $40, which basically rounds up our investment to $700. US I really wanted to test this PC in many games and take cool pictures of it, but the buyer said that he was in a hurry and he wanted the PC as fast as possible. So I made sure to speed up the building process and I literally finished it 30 seconds before his arrival. And once he came here, I could just tell how excited he was from the way he was looking at the PC. I don't get this much profit from building PCs too often. I always try to build the best gaming PC that I can with the least amount of profit, which can be wrong, because at the end of the day I gotta make a living from building PCs, since this is the only thing that I do. And I love it, and if I get to see a smile on the person's face, that is honestly all that I can ever ask for. But anyhow, it is time for us to take this PC for a spin and see if it can play games on the highest settings at 1080p resolution with ray tracing enabled. Let's begin with Witcher 3. I'll be using Nvidia's frame generation in all of these games by the way, since there's no real downside to it. It's literally free FPS. As for this game, we'll be running it on the highest settings with ray tracing enabled. Additionally, I decided to enable the LSS as well, because without it things looked a bit too sharp for me and the LSS made the game look a bit more natural so to say. After running around for a few minutes, we averaged a solid 93 FPS. In Hogwarts Legacy on the other hand, I was expecting way less FPS, but to my surprise the computer managed to get 100 FPS instead. Similar to Witcher 3, we had everything maxed out here as well. Ray tracing was enabled as well as Nvidia's frame generation and DLSS was set to quality. Now a lot of people might say that this is not the real performance, we are using frame generation and upscaling methods to achieve more FPS. But the thing is, I wasn't able to notice any visual changes between having the LSS disabled and having it set to quality. The only thing that I actually noticed was the extra FPS that I gained from having it enabled. Now if we set it to balanced, then it becomes somewhat noticeable. 
but having it on quality makes such a small visual difference that I don't think most people will be able to tell if it's actually on or not. Cyberpunk will be our last game for today's benchmarks. I honestly wanted to test more games on this PC, but as I mentioned earlier, I was extremely limited on time, so these are all the tests that I managed to record. I tested this game on the high settings with both ray tracing and path tracing enabled. Without any sort of upscaling or frame generation, we got around 25 FPS. But once we enabled Nvidia's frame generation and set the LSS to quality, we started getting more than triple the amount of FPS. Which is simply insane if you think about it. The technology has come a long way. Nowadays, it's not so much about how powerful the hardware itself is. I mean, of course we have stuff like RTX 4090s and I bet 5090s are gonna be even more insane, but it doesn't come anywhere near to what software can do nowadays. Tripling the FPS is 5-6 to six years of hardware development, where software can just triple the FPS by simply activating some setting in the game. And if you think that there's some kind of drawback to enabling all of these settings, let me tell you that there isn't. I was able to play any of these games with both Nvidia's frame gen and DLSS enabled as if it was nothing. Now I don't normally like praising Nvidia for these things, but the reality is that their technology is really powerful. But tell me what you think. Were you expecting this much of an FPS boost from frame gen and DLSS? And are you by any chance also gaming on a 40 series Nvidia graphics card? On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.